What if I told you that some of the most common advice you've followed your whole life is not just wrong, but potentially harmful? We are surrounded by common sense, passed down through generations, forming the bedrock of our daily habits. From the way you treat a simple cut to the number of hours you think you need to sleep, these rules often go unquestioned. But what does science actually say about them? Today, we're putting nine of these old wives' tailies and ingrained beliefs under the microscope. We will separate established fact from popular fiction. The truth behind some of these myths will surprise you, and a few might even change the way you see the world. Let's begin with number nine, covering your mouth with your hands. It's a reflex, a polite instinct drilled into us since childhood. The moment you feel a sneeze or cough coming on, you slap your hands over your mouth and nose. It seems like the responsible thing to do. However, this common sense move is about as effective as trying to catch smoke with a net. Imagine your hands are the busiest subway station in a bustling city. When you sneeze into them, you're not stopping the germs. You're just giving thousands of microscopic passengers a free pass to board. A single sneeze can launch up to 40,000 droplets into the air at speeds of 100 miles per hour. Your hands, with all their gaps between the fingers, are terrible at containing this biological explosion. Many of these germ-laden particles escape right through. But the real problem begins after the sneeze. Those same hands, now a public transportation system for viruses and bacteria, go on to touch everything around you. A doorknob becomes the next station, your phone a crowded platform, the elevator button a packed train car. Scientists have tracked how these droplets spread, finding that a single sneeze covered by hands can contaminate an entire office floor in just a few hours. The solution? Ditch the hand cover and adopt the elbow sneeze. Your elbow rarely comes into contact with other people or surfaces. Or even better, use a tissue a disposable prison for germs that you can immediately send to trash jail. Next, at number eight, using peroxide for wounds. Picture this, you get a cut and out comes the brown bottle of hydrogen peroxide. As it's poured on, a dramatic fizzing and bubbling erupts on your skin. It looks and feels like a powerful cleaning process, a tiny science experiment vanquishing all the bad germs. The truth is that satisfying fizz is the sound of widespread destruction. Think of it this way. Your body rushes a team of expert construction workers, your healthy cells to the site of an injury to begin repairs. Pouring on peroxide is like calling in a chemical bulldozer. It is an indiscriminate killer. It doesn't just destroy the harmful bacteria. It obliterates your own healthy tissue, including the fibroblasts and keratinocytes that are essential for rebuilding your skin. That burning sensation isn't the feeling of it working. It's the feeling of your own cells being fried. Studies have shown that wounds treated with peroxide can heal more slowly and have a higher chance of scarring because the body first has to clean up the peroxide's damage before it can even begin the real repair work. So what's the alternative? Keep it simple. Just rinse the wound thoroughly with clean running water and a little mild soap. That's all you need to clean it out before putting on a bandage. At number seven, we have the microwave nutrient nuke. We all have that friend who looks on in horror as you place a bowl of vegetables into the microwave. You're killing all the nutrients. They gasp. This belief is so widespread that many see microwaves as little more than boxes for reheating leftover pizza. But this piece of common sense is completely backward. Microwaving is actually one of the best methods for preserving nutrients in your food. Traditional cooking methods, like boiling, are the real nutrient thieves. When you boil vegetables, water-soluble vitamins like vitamin C and B vitamins leach out of the food and into the surrounding water, which you then typically pour down the drain. It's like taking your vitamins for a swim and then flushing them away. Microwaves, on the other hand, work by exciting the water molecules already inside the food, heating it rapidly from the inside out. 
This means much shorter cooking times and less water is needed. Less time exposed to heat and less water means fewer nutrients have a chance to break down or escape. Studies on broccoli, for instance, show that microwaving it retains far more of its beneficial compounds than boiling or even stir-frying. Your microwave isn't a nutrient assassin. It's a getaway driver, helping vitamins escape the destruction of prolonged heat. Coming in at number six is the spicy food ulcer scare. For decades, spicy food has been the villain in the story of stomach ulcers. Put down that hot sauce, the advice went, or you'll burn a hole in your stomach lining. People with stomach pain were immediately told to adopt a bland, boring diet. But science has revealed a shocking plot twist. Spicy food is not the culprit. The true villain is a sneaky bacterium called Helicobacter pylori, along with the overuse of certain pain medications like aspirin and ibuprofen. Think of your stomach lining as the thick, protective wall of a castle. The H. pylori bacteria are like tiny saboteurs that burrow into this wall, weakening its defenses and allowing stomach acid to cause damage. Those pain medications can act like a confused guard who accidentally dismantles a section of the wall. Spicy food in this scenario is merely an innocent bystander that gets blamed. In fact, capsaicin the compound that gives chili peppers their heat may actually help protect the stomach by increasing the production of protective mucus. Now, if you already have an ulcer, eating spicy food can certainly irritate it, like poking an existing ruse. But it didn't cause the bruise in the first place. Cultures with diets famously rich in spicy food do not have higher rates of ulcers. Dismantling this myth one flavorful bite at a time. At number five, we have the eight-hour sleep lie. The idea that every human being requires exactly eight hours of sleep per night is one of the most rigid rules of modern wellness. But this one-size-fits-all mandate has less to do with human biology and more to do with industrial history. The concept of a consolidated eight-hour sleep block was popularized during the Industrial Revolution to create a predictable workforce that could operate factory machinery in shifts. It was a rule of commerce, not of nature. Before the invention of alarm clocks and factory whistles, human sleep patterns were far more flexible. Historical records show many cultures practiced segmented sleep, a first sleep of a few hours, followed by a period of being awake in the middle of the night and then a second sleep. Biologically, our bodies operate in 90-minute sleep cycles. Some people feel fully rested after four cycles, which is six hours. Others need six cycles or nine hours. There even exists a group of people known as natural short sleepers who have a genetic mutation, allowing them to thrive on just four to six hours of sleep with no ill effects. Forcing yourself to stay in bed for eight hours when your body is naturally awake, can lead to sleep anxiety and frustration, making you feel more tired. The key isn't to chase an arbitrary number, but to listen to your body's own internal clock. Number four is the myth of a dog's healing saliva. Let the dog lick it. His mouth is cleaner than yours. This old saying is often quoted when a dog affectionately licks a person's cut or scrape. While it's true that dog saliva contains some antibacterial proteins, that's like saying a bucket of swamp water is healthy because it contains a single drop of medicine. A dog's mouth is a mobile Petri dish, teeming with a vast array of bacteria. Consider a dog's daily activities. They use their mouths to investigate everything from their own behinds to decomposing treasures they find in the yard. Those mouths are home to bacteria like Pasteurella, and Capnicitifaga, organisms that are harmless to the dog but can cause severe, life-threatening infections in humans if introduced into an open wound. There are numerous documented medical cases of people ending up hospitalized with sepsis or aggressive infections simply because they believed this dangerous myth. Instead of letting your furry friend play doctor, it's far safer to trust a simple antiseptic and a clean bandage. At number three, feeding bread to birds. A trip to the park often involves the seemingly wholesome activity of tossing pieces of bread to ducks and pigeons. 
it feels kind, but in reality, it's an act of unintentional harm. For a bird, a diet of bread is the equivalent of a human living on nothing but cotton candy. It fills their stomach, making them feel full, but it's devoid of the essential nutrients they need to survive and thrive. This junk food diet leads to several problems. Young birds that eat too much bread can develop a crippling condition called angel wing, a deformity where the wing twists outward, rendering the bird unable to fly. Furthermore, uneaten bread that's left to rot in the water promotes the growth of toxic algae blooms, which deplete the oxygen in the water and can kill fish and other aquatic life. It turns a peaceful pond into a polluted, unhealthy environment. If you want to feed the birds, offer them something that mimics their natural diet, like birdseed, cracked corn, peas, or lettuce. At number two, we find the penny on the train tracks. It's a classic childhood dare, a seemingly harmless bit of mischief. Place a penny on the rail and let the immense weight of a train flatten it into a cool, oblong souvenir. The myth is that it's a minor act of fun. The reality is that it's a federally prohibited act of trespassing that is incredibly dangerous. The primary danger isn't that the penny will derail the train. A freight train weighing millions of pounds will not be affected by a two, five-gram coin. The danger is to you. Trains are deceptively quiet and move much faster than they appear. They can sneak up on you before you have time to react. More insidiously, they create a powerful aerodynamic effect called a slipstream, a vacuum of wind that can pull a person standing too close off their feet and under the wheels. The flattened penny itself can also become a projectile, shot out from under the wheel at high velocity, capable of causing serious injury. The risk of a fine, serious injury, or worse, makes this one piece of harmless fun that should be left in the past. And finally, can number one, the brain growth myth. For a long time, it was believed that the human brain was like a block of concrete. Once you reached adulthood, it was set. You had all the brain cells you were ever going to have, and it was all downhill from there. This intimidating idea has been thoroughly debunked. The brain is not a static organ. It's a dynamic, ever-changing city that is constantly under construction. Scientists have discovered a process called neurogenesis, where our brains continue to create new neurons throughout our entire lives, particularly in regions associated with memory and learning. Beyond creating new cells, the brain is constantly rewiring itself through neuroplasticity. When you learn a new skill, like playing an instrument or speaking a new language, your brain builds new connections and strengthens existing ones like adding new roads and buildings to its cityscape. The prefrontal cortex, responsible for decision-making, isn't even fully mature until your mid-twenties. Your brain's ability to grow, adapt, and change doesn't end. As long as you keep challenging it with new information and experiences, its app store never closes. From the germs on our hands to the myths in our heads, it's clear that common sense isn't always common fact. Questioning what we think we know is the first step toward a smarter, healthier life. Which of these myths did you use to believe? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoy debunking everyday misconceptions, be sure to subscribe for more journeys into the truth.